how can I change my price if I don't know the real, the real reason why of this, why there is this objection? A lot of people will say price is too high without even thinking. It's it's automatic. So one has to make sure that you go into details why this objection. Is it best to make the first offer or not? Well, it all depends. Usually, uh, it's better to make the first offer yourself because it does two things. It accomplishes two things. One, it sets the anchor point where the, the, the discussion will be around your own offer. The other point is that it has a psychological impact. For example, if I say my price is $60 and the other side thinks it's 50 well, the moment I say 60, automatically the person will start thinking of how do we get to 60. So it has an anchor, anchor point of the discussion. Uh, you also need to know to make sure that your offer is realistic, that you can defend with valuable arguments. Otherwise, the other side will, will start questioning it. So it depends. If you know the market, you have your firm is reputable, uh, you're well prepared, then I think you should make the first offer. So how can we overcome price objection? Yeah. Well, that's typical. There are a number of objections people say to you. They might say, well, your price is too high. Well, one should say, well, what do you mean by too high? Or somebody will say to you, well, can you improve your offer? And again, I would say, well, can, can, how would you do it? In other words, uh, instead of making a concession, I would automatically ask a question. How can I change my price if I don't know the real the real reason why of this, why there is this objection. A lot of people will say price is too high without even thinking. It's, it's automatic. So one has to make sure that you go into details why this objection. Now, a typical one is when the other side will tell you, I can get a better deal from competition. Well, my first reaction will be, well, if they have, if they do have a better offer from a competition, why are they here talking to me? They should be over there. So usually it's a ploy. Now, as you see this in the slide here, uh, what usually when you negotiate, there's always competitors, either actual competitors or potential competitors. And when you negotiate, you and the other side, the moment the other side tells you that we can get a better deal from competition, they are introducing a third party into the negotiation. So you're no longer negotiating with the other side, also with the other one. So your job is to neutralize that threat of competition. How do you do it? By complimenting competition. This is your chance, actually. When somebody tells you, I can get a better deal from competition, you, this is your chance to say good things about competition. And the other side doesn't expect that. So if you say nice things about competition, they start listening to you. How come? For example, I say, competition, good company. I know the people, good product. So they start listening to you. And then I become a messenger. I would say na nasty things about competition, but not coming from me. I want to keep the relationship with my, with my buyer. So I will say, I heard or I read about that this company is, have, is, is producing at full capacity. They're no longer able to accept new orders. Or I could say to them, I heard that the chief engineer is leaving the company to set up a startup, to start a new company. Or I could say that, this company is a good company, but they're having a labor strike coming up and they might shut down for months. So what I do, I instill in the mind of the other side that competition is not really, uh, is not the place where you want to do business with. It's not coming from me. I want to keep positive dialogue with the other side and I use third sources of information to make them wondering whether competition is the answer. Uh, as you can see here, uh, from the slide, I remove by bringing up these comments about competition, I remove this, the competition. And then the next slide shows that I'm back here, just the two of us, me and the other side. And the next slide will say, and this is very important to remember, don't criticize competition, but you want to neutralize it. Why is the pricing issue such a dominant in the negotiations? Yeah, price, uh, a lot of people think that price is the number one factor when you negotiate. Well, it is important, but it's not the single 
factor. Uh, I like to refer to a U.S. survey of uh, purchasing executives some years ago. They were asked, what makes you, which are the factors that will make you accept the offer? And they will say, number one is quality of the product, number two is delivery schedule, and number three is price. Uh, I would imagine that if I made the same, if the same survey would have been made in, in let's say, uh, uh, ex uh, in other cultures where the relationship plays a dominant role in business, I would say number one would be the relationship, number two would be the re reputation of the firm, and uh, again, number three would be price. Well, thank you so much for coming into the studios today. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. And thank you at home for watching. Don't forget to click back to Dukascopy TV for more interviews like this.